Hello and welcome to Sociology 240 Self and Society. My name is Francisco Ambrosio Figueroa III and I will be your instructor in this course. Today, what I would like to do is take an in-depth look at the syllabus and really talk about how this course is going to be organized and executed. So let's jump right into it. Syllabus overview. Okay, now we have the syllabus up. You can find the syllabus under syllabus in Canvas, and I think I've also linked it in uh, the program files under files. So let's quickly go through the syllabus. I'll underscore some important parts. I'll probably fast forward through things that you can just read on your own time, but let's get into it. So again, this course is titled Soch 240, Self and Society. My name, again, is Francisco Ambrosio Figueroa III. I'm a PhD ABD. My pronouns are he, him, his. The meeting times for this course are completely online. There are no set meeting times. It's fully asynchronous or OWM. Now here, you could see that I have linked the um, OWM practice policies and procedures as outlined by Dominican University. So make sure you are registered for the correct course. This is a fully online asynchronous OWM course. My office hours will be Tuesday, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. and Thursday, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. and by appointment uh, via Canvas Big Blue Button. Or if Canvas is being weird and we're having too many problems uh, throughout the semester, I'll switch it to uh, Zoom. Uh, and if I do, I will share that link with all of you. Uh, the inst instructional format, again, this is a remote online asynchronous course taught fully in Canvas and all work and communication will be done through Canvas uh, and email. Uh, here's my email for your convenience. Um, oh, speaking of, I want everybody to email me a short little bio. Introduce yourself, um, tell me what your major is, what academic year you are, um, you know, if you're if you have a job, uh, what you like to do in your spare time, just a quick, you know, four sentence introduction. I would like to get to know each and every one of you. So I'm expecting that everyone in the course at some point uh, in the first week will email me and introduce themselves to me. And I very much look forward to that. So this is a three credit course. Uh, the expected student workload is three hours of learning and studying, plus six hours of completing assignments for a total of nine hours uh, as a weekly average, uh, of which students have will be committing to at the beginning of the semester. Um, I have a nice little welcome here. Feel free to read that. I'm not gonna read it here. Um, okay, how to contact me. The best and easiest way to contact me is via email. I've also linked it here, again, for your convenience, so that it's now in two areas in the syllabus. Um, I usually reply within 72 hours. That's kind of on the longer side. Usually, um, I'm fairly quick uh, with email, but you know, in order to solidify a, a practice, I will get back to you within 72 hours, but usually it'll be a bit sooner. Um, and again, please let me know privately if you prefer a nickname or a pronoun as well. The required text for this book can be purchased uh, in the D D uh, Dominican University bookstore. However, I did have a chance to call uh, the manager of the bookstore and it's not yet in as of right now. I don't think they're expecting it to be in for a, a few more days. So please know that you can purchase this book, this book at any bookstore. Um, here is the, let's see if I can get uh, a shot of this. Here is the only required text of the course. It's called The Self in Society, um, and it's by Leslie Irvine. Uh, it was published in the year 2013. I have provided the ISB N number here, and the publisher is San Diego. Um, okay, so you've all seen the course description when you've enrolled in the course. I'm not gonna go through that uh, here, but here's a nice little course description. Um, class policies and expectations. I do wanna take a quick minute to really emphasize some things in this section of the syllabus. Students are required to read and acknowledge the university-wide policies each semester. You can find the Dominican university-wide policies, academic policies uh, here. I linked it here for you. Um, and you're also required to regularly check your email 
and Canvas. You have to be logging into Canvas. You have to be checking your email. I suggest you do that three to five times a week, just in case there are updates, changes to the syllabus, um, as we'll find out later on when I have the schedule, uh, the schedule is likely to change. In fact, I can almost guarantee it. Um, again, uh, we'll talk about this a bit later. The schedule itself is a tool. You don't need to follow the schedule. This course is completely asynchronous. You learn and go as, um, as your schedule allows, but I have provided a schedule for you and that schedule might change from time to time. I've been teaching sociology for seven years, and in many ways, I'm gonna treat this course as I would a face-to-face -face course. However, I fully understand that this is not a face-to-face -face course, and there are many unique and specific and significant differences between the two types of learning experiences. One of the ways in which I'll treat this as a face-to-face -face course is my level of expectation. I expect the same level of commitment in terms of a student's time, energy, and dedication to the course. Just because this is an online class doesn't mean that it's easier than a face-to-face -face course. In fact, in many ways, it's much more difficult. However, uh, there are significant pros to taking an online asynchronous class, one of which is being you get to work as your schedule allows. Um, so please do not fall behind in this course. It is very, very, very difficult to catch up. Use the course schedule as a guide and a tool to keep yourself on task with assignments and readings. If this is your first online course, you will quickly see that unlike traditional courses, online courses are student-centered rather than instructor-centered. This course is extremely reading intensive. I can't emphasize that enough. There's going to be a lot of reading. It's going to start off slow, right? I want to, we're going to get our feet wet with some reading. And then after the first two, three weeks, we're really going to start to get involved into the text, not only um, the required text here, but also uh, supplemental readings that I've already posted on Canvas. Now, what this means is that you are responsible for completing all readings. You are responsible for your own, own learning and your own success. I will facilitate that as much as possible, um, but this is really an, almost an independent project. I am here to fully facilitate, underscore, highlight, present. I'll have lectures here and there, uh, recorded lectures that I post, but this is a 100% online course is a reading intensive course and you are responsible for completing all readings and assignments um, and you are responsible for your learning if another part of this is if you ask me super basic questions things that are either covered in a lecture or covered in um, in some sort of written material or covered in the syllabus I'm simply going to refer you to those resources. Now, again, I'm always here to help. I'm always here to help facilitate and guide, but um, this is really going to be a you project, right? This, this course is significantly dependent on you and your dedication and the energy you put into this course. Okay, what do we have here? I will offer a schedule, I already told you that. Okay, yeah, so that's pretty much, um, that covers the class policies and expectations section. Um, I've listed some uh, additional helpful hints here. This is all basic stuff. Be highly motivated and disciplined. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this course will not be any easier than a face-to-face -face traditional classroom course. Um, and if this is your first asynchronous course, please, in your bio, when you email me, let me know that this is your first asynchronous course and we can kind of have a dialogue and a back and forth on you know, what it might be like. Um, and, and I would really like to know if this is your first fully online asynchronous course. A uh, bunch of other stuff here. Um, please, please, please use the Dominican University Writing Lab. The link is here for you as all of your graded work in this course requires quality writing. If you struggle with writing, if you already know that you struggle with writing, go ahead and start making appointments in the Writing Center because we will have a final paper in this course. And the earlier you get started working with the Dominican University Writing Lab, the better. Keep an open, big picture, macro level mind as you're reading these texts. And we're gonna, later on, I'm gonna have a whole other lecture on you know how 
the best way to, to read these things. A lot of these readings are deeply metaphysical and philosophical, um, of course, and sociological, but students tend to struggle with the more, the metaphysics part of, of, this, of this course. Typically, it's brand new to them, um, and you know they haven't had any philo philosophy courses in the past. So it's kind of this whole new world that's being opened. And the best way to approach the readings and the best way to approach the philosophy and the metaphysics that comes along with self and society is to keep an open mind, a big picture, macro level uh, open mind. Um, what else do we have here? Let's see. Okay, so we're not going to complete the entire textbook. I think there's two chapters that we don't cover, uh, and they're, they're towards the end. Um, but we will be examining in detail, and I will expect that you read the text fully. Um, and oftentimes, I always tell students that it takes one or two passes to really kind of soak in what's happening in our text. So again, this is a highly reading intensive course. Please schedule lots of time for reading in this course. If you do not complete the readings prior to participating in discussions, your lack of preparation and knowledge will be glaringly obvious to not only me, but to your classmates. And the last thing we wanna do is be wasting each other's time. So please, please, please do the reading. Okay, so I have some instructor responsibilities here where I outline what I'll be responsible for. For example, I'll be maintaining a respectful, productive, inclusive, and thought-provoking learning environment. Um, I'll provide fair, honest, and timely grading and feedback, so on and so forth. Um, my instructor responsibilities are listed here. Okay, so now we're on to the topics. These are the broad topics that we'll be covering in this course. Part one of this course are theoretical perspectives on the self in sociological social psychology and its uh, ascribed methodology. Uh, we'll start off with some classical readings. We will quickly jump into um, interactionist perspectives and other approaches used to examine the self and society. We'll spend a whole um, week on uh, methods. Um, and then we'll quickly move into the topics studied by sociological social psychologists, of which are things like socialization uh, in childhood and adolescence, prejudice and discrimination, and then the new direction, the cutting edge stuff that's happening today. Part three of this course is reflecting on what you've learned about social, um, sociological social psychology. So here we have our learning objectives. Please take a minute to go through these and kind of provide yourself with an overview we're going to be doing at the end of this course you will be able to do everything from applying the sociological imagination to concrete examples of social interactions all the way to pr the production of analysis um, and and justifications through argumentation using uh, social psychological perspectives so um, here are our learning objectives here requirements and grading okay this is kind of like the main part of this whole video. 30% of your final grade is a midterm exam. The midterm exam will be around 20 to 25 questions, mainly multiple choice. However, there will be probably two, uh, one to two essay questions, short answer questions. 40% um, of your overall final grade in this course is gonna be short essay blog posts. Now I'll go into the blog posts in more detail, but you are expected and are required to submit six 250 word blog posts and six 50 word responses. And again, I'm gonna go into the blog posts, how to set up your account. We're using WordPress. I'll have a whole separate um, instructions for you on that. But we have 30% final, excuse me, we have a 30% midterm exam, and then we have a 40% short essay blog post um, section. It's a, it's a writing intensive section, followed by um, a final paper of which is worth 30% of your final grade. The final paper is a six page paper on the relationship between self and society. And if you set up your blog posts, um, and, and we're gonna talk about this more, but if you set up your blog posts and you write your blog posts, um, correctly, you'll have already six pages uh, to use as templates and a rough draft for your final paper. So your final paper is really going to mirror, if you do it correctly, um, a lot of the things that you are already writing about in your blog post. You will be able to use that material directly in your final paper. 
Okay, so again, requirements and grading, 30% midterm, 40% short essay blog posts, and 30% final paper. Exams. Okay, so again, as I mentioned before, there will be one midterm exam in this course and it's worth 30% of your total grade. The midterm exam will be open book, open note, and will include mostly multiple choice questions. The midterm exam can be taken on Canvas and can be taken at any point in the semester. The deadline, however, to take the midterm exam is May 4th, 2023, which is the last day of uh, class, essentially. Um, it's the last day of undergraduate final examination week. Um, I, in, the, in the schedule, you're gonna see, I have suggested when you should take the final exam. And um, I don't want anyone to worry, excuse me, the midterm exam. I have, in, this, in, this, in the reading schedule, I've suggested a time where you could take the midterm exam. I don't want anyone to freak out over the midterm exam. Honestly, I think it's a poor way of assessment. Um, but it, it keeps us on our toes, right? We have to have some kind of qualitative, quantitative examination. The, the midterm exam it, it is difficult, but I'm gonna provide you with all of the resources you need to be highly successful. In all my courses prior to this, almost everyone gets an A on quantitative um, examinations. Um, so don't worry about it. Don't freak about the midterm. You're going to have everything you need and I'm going to cover everything that's going to be in the midterm exam. And I will even perhaps provide some sort of review, uh, review sheet. We'll see where we're at, but, um, don't stress about the midterm exam. You can take it whenever you want. Again, in the reading schedule, I have suggested a week where you take it. Um, but again, it's, it, it's not an easy exam, but it's an easy exam. Okay. Okay, short essay blog post. Now I'm just gonna read this right off of the syllabus just to make sure that I've underscored it correctly. Um, and again, I will do a whole another video lecture on, on how to sign up, um, but here are the directions uh, if, if you choose not to watch the video. The online blog assignments are designed to enhance student participation and engagement, extend the breadth and depth of class lectures, and provide the student with a space to create knowledge as they discuss with each other the meaning of a text or idea. Students will compose six 250 word blog posts and six 50 word responses for a total of 40% of your final grade. Blog posts and responses must be submitted in tandem. This means if you submit a blog post, you must also submit a response to another student's blog post or response. So you can respond to either a blog post or you can respond in 50 words to another response. Each blog post is worth 10 points. A blog post without a response will receive a zero. So you're in, in and we'll get to this when, when I cover the canvas part of it. But when you submit a blog post, it's a 250 word blog post plus a 50 word response to either someone else's blog or someone else's response to a blog. Um, full credit is extremely easy to achieve. You will not lose points for spelling and grammar, but it has to be readable, right? You got, you, we have to be able to read these things. Um, the deadline to submit all posts is May 4th, 2023, right? So again, finals week. But don't leave this to the last minute because the last thing you wanna do is have to write six pages of blog posts. I, again, in the schedule, underscore when you should be submitting these things. And typically, it's the first six weeks, right? You wanna get these out of the way with early. Um, okay, moving down here, at the end of each week, so we're in this section here, at the end of each week, I will post a new topic on our course blog. And the course blog link is right here. I linked it for you here. And again, it's gonna be down here in the directions. It's um, www.sociology8.com. Uh, you'll just uh, control, um, uh, I forgot the keyboard command, but you just click on it right here. Um, and again, I'm gonna go over the blog and I'll show you the blog in a different lecture. I will ask you to connect material from course readings and lectures to your post. 
Blog posts must be a minimum of 250 words. The easiest way to complete the word count is to open up a Word document and draft the post in Word to ensure you have hit the 250 word count. The 250 word count uh, requirement. Use the same method for response. Open up a Word document, type out your response, make sure it's 50 words, and then you can cut and paste from Word directly into the blog website. Um, after you've completed your blog post or response in a Word document, you can simply cut and paste the text in the leave a reply text box on the course blog website. Again, might sound weird now, um, and you know, this is gonna be, it'll take a while to get, us, to get everyone set up, but it's super easy, it's super straightforward. Um, it, you know, we've all signed up for things before, it's super quick, it's just a couple of clicks. Blog post must be academic and you should carefully compose your entries. Again, if you do this correctly, if you carefully compose your entries, each blog post is a page of your final paper, an outline at least, right? A skeleton. So that when it comes time to draft your final paper, you have already six pages of written text. Um, please know that unreflective venting is not acceptable, right? This isn't Facebook uh, or Twitter. This is an academic exercise whereby, uh, um, and the first two aren't so much, but the rest of them are deeply, uh, are gonna be deeply academic and they're gonna um, really require that you reflect on the course readings um, and apply them in, in real time. Short essay blog post grading in Canvas, right here. So um, to receive credit in Canvas for a blog post and response, remember you're submitting these in tandem, um, a blog post without a response is a zero, okay? To receive credit in Canvas for a blog post and response, navigate to the assignments page in Canvas. I'll show you how to do this later. Um, click on the blog post. Right now there's one through 10, I think. Um, and in the text box, type in your course blog pen name and hit submit. When you hit submit, that'll prompt me to go to our blog and read your post. Um, I'll, you know, after I read your post, I'll then go into um, and read your blog post and response. Now you're probably thinking, pen name, what the heck? So as you can see here, here are the directions to access the course blog. You're gonna go to sociology.8.com. You're gonna click on the blog assignment you wish to respond. And again, I'm gonna show you this later in a breakdown in, in a different lecture. Um, in, click on the blog assignment you wish to respond to. Scroll to the bottom of the screen and find leave a reply. It's a, it's a little text box where you can respond to um, my original blog post question or uh, directions. Um, you're gonna cut and paste into the text box your response. And now the first time you do this, you'll be asked to enter your email and create a name. Do not use your regular name. I want the blog space to be completely anonymous. Only I will know who is who. When it asks you to create a name, create a pen name, something um, you know, like a gamer tag if you play games or um, a, anything other than your real name, okay? Again, do not use your real name as your pen name. Um, when you do this, allow for notifications so that you can be notified when someone responds to your analysis. You're gonna find that this is, you know, really gonna become a, a deeply engaging and um, there's gonna be a lot of back and forth. This is going to be how we interact with one another through the blog. Um, so when you originally set up your account, when it asks you to put your email and your username, there's gonna be two boxes. I suggest that you allow to be notified via email when someone responds to your post. Register as a user only. You do not need to choose a domain or pay anything. I've already paid to set everything up. There's no payment required. This is completely free to you as a student. So be sure you don't kind of go down a real tr a weird trail where it's wanting you to set up a domain name and it's gonna you know ask for a credit card. That if you get there, reach out to me and we'll figure it out together. But if you just follow these simple steps, if you go to the blog, you click on the reply button. Before you can reply, it's gonna ask you to input your email and a username, and it's as simple as that. 
Um, again, please reach out to me ASAP if you need help registering as a user. I suggest that um, you know classes start Monday. Um, you you should really have this. This would be the first thing you do. No, second thing you do. The first thing you do is going to email a little bio introduction to me. Uh, the second thing you do is go to the course blog and set this up. Um, there's uh, two blogs already posted. Um, again, I'll go into more detail on the blog and how to set everything up in, in a later in a later video. Um, okay, moving on to the final paper. Uh, for this paper, students may write a literature review, a research paper, a metaphysical slash think paper. Now the think paper is probably going to be your best bet, your, the easiest way to succeed in this course. But not everyone likes to think um, in these kinds of terms, right? Some people love writing literature reviews. Some people love writing research papers. Some people love writing an argument paper. Um, you can, you know, perhaps write about um, you know whose perspective is more valid in, um, in 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 the contemporary times, George Herbert Mead or Cooley's perspective on the self. There are different ways to do this, different ways to succeed. Um, you can write a compare and contrast paper uh, or even an interpretive paper where you know you say something like, of importance to this paper, uh, we are going to interpret um, Goffman's theory of dramaturgy, whatever it might be, right? Um, regardless of the paper type, for all papers, six pages of text is the minimum and maximum number of pages. Six pages six pages you'd be surprised how many students send me seven eight and they're going to lose points if you don't even if you don't hit the six pages i won't even read it, it has to be six pages of text uh, the text must be double spaced in times new roman 12 point font with one inch margins on all four sides for each page don't try to cut corners here you know i've seen it all please just follow these formatting requirements. If it doesn't follow the formatting requirements, it's just gonna be a zero. And this is 40% or what is this? This is 30% of your final grade. So um, just set up your paper and format it correctly, okay? I will not read papers that don't follow the formatting requirements and they will receive a zero. Um, the topic of the paper must be centered around the relationship between self and society, right? So that is your in a way, the first half of your thesis, right? We're taught this is a self and society course. The paper is a self and society paper. Um, so the topic of the paper must be centered around the relationship between self and society. I'll dedicate one full lecture to the final paper and I'll go over the assignment in full details in a later lecture. Um, students must declare their type of paper by the rough draft deadline, which is week 11, March 23rd. Now, again, I'm providing you with these dates and these deadlines. And in the course schedule, you're gonna see those dates and deadlines. But remember, this is a fully online asynchronous course. There are no deadlines. There, you know, if you, if you don't submit to me um, or declare the paper type uh, by week 11, Okay, fine, no, no big deal. But I want you to treat this course and the schedule as if it was a normal face-to-face -face course because that's gonna keep you on track. That is gonna be the, the, the singular way in which you succeed. Now others, sure, maybe they do everything the last four weeks of class and they could swing that. But um, I know for me personally, I will not succeed that way. So I have provided a schedule and deadlines for uh, students who, who need that kind of support and facilitation. But remember, this is an asynchronous online course. Nothing is due until the very end. May 4th, everything's due. But please do not wait till May 4th. Please do not wait until you know the last two weeks of the semester to be like, I don't know what I'm doing for my paper. I won't be able to help you. It'll be too late. If you submit your rough draft and your declaration by week 11, that gives me time to read your rough drafts and give you feedback. And I will absolutely do that for those of you who submit their rough drafts and declare their paper type um, by week 11. You can submit your rough draft and declaration via email to my email. Um, oh, only Microsoft Word documents are gonna be accepted in Canvas. Your final paper must be a Microsoft Word document. You can download Microsoft Word for free um, um, using the uh, Dominican resources, library resources. 
Um, but most of us have Microsoft Word. <clears throat> so please, we're using Word docs. <clears throat> Additional course policies are here. Different course resources are here for you. And here we are to the course schedule. Again, remember, this is an asynchronous online course. You don't have to do it this way, but I highly suggest that you stay on this schedule. Um, if you, I promise, if you stay on track and you use this schedule as a guide and a tool, you're gonna be highly successful in this course. I promise. Um, so we have week one. <clears throat> We have some reading. A blog post is already posted on our universe on our uh, course blog. Um, we have our week two, our week three, so on and so forth. Oh, week two, no class, January sixteenth, MLK day. But there still is an expectation that you read um, uh, and participate in the course. I think um, I think it's that Thursday you have off. I can't remember what day it lands on, but um, there's still reading and assignments for that day. Uh, we move on to week three. We're moving on. I have one, I think one or two optional readings here. I would highly suggest that you skim and go through self and self concept here. It's a lot of reading, but just skim through it. It's really a great supplement, uh, supplemental reading to what we're talking about and learning about um, in self. Um, and again, here's week four. And as you can see here, the blog posts, blog post one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right now there's ten. Um, you know, just in case, right now there's ten. There might be less, there might be more. The requirement is six. Um, we have our mid semester vacation, March 6th through the 12th. I have not required you to do any readings. I want you to enjoy that time for yourself, get a nice reboot. Um, I remember when I was an undergrad, I always used um, these types of breaks to work a little bit more, get a little bit of extra money. So if 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 that's what you uh, decide to do, um, I, I didn't want to add on top of that any extra reading or assignments for that week. However, I would also use this time to really fully develop a thesis and rough line, a rough draft slash outline for your paper. Um, you could start even the week before. Um, here in week eight, I'm already suggesting that you start outlining and drafting your paper. If you have submitted every blog post up uh, until week eight, you should already have eight pages of written text, right? Excuse me. Um, there's only six. The six is a requirement. So if you've done all of the blog posts, you already have six pages of written text to work with. Um, let's see here. Moving forward to uh, week 10, 11, 12. Um, here we have uh, week 11, the rough draft deadline, and uh, you're going to be declaring your paper type to me. Again, these are, this is su suggestions for you, but I highly suggest by, by this time, you know what paper you're writing, you've submitted to me a rough draft of which I could give you feedback on. And then just kind of finishing out through the end of semester, we have our just normal reading schedule here. Um, and here we have the last week, uh, May 1st through uh, the 4th is the undergrad final examinations week. Everything in this course will be due May 4th by midnight. May 4th by midnight. Okay, so with that, that is the syllabus. Um, you know, it's nothing too fancy. Um, you know, I want you to think of the syllabus in two ways. One, yes, it is sort of a contract of which you receive and are agreeing to by participating and moving forward in the course, right? So it's very important. The syllabus is very important. But at the same time, it's just a piece of paper, okay? This is gonna change. Now the policies and expectations, all that stuff is very important, it's not really gonna change. But, um, you know, maybe, you know, we're struggling with the concept, I'm getting a lot of emails um, relating to, you know, the differences between sociological, social psychology, and social psychology, right? Maybe we're struggling with that nuance. Perhaps there'll be extensions um, additional supplemental reading that I apply and we might put us back a week or up a week of which we'll have to catch up. So going back to one of the responsibilities that you have to abide by in this course is checking your announcements on Canvas, checking your email. There's going to be probably some slight changes along the way. You have to be checking and um, fully locked in and tuned in 
to the conversation of the course. So please, please, please check your email, check Canvas, check the announcements. Make sure that you have that little checkbox in Canvas to allow notifications for announcements because I'll be posting announcements quite often. Okay, with that said, again, welcome to uh, my course. I'm so looking forward to you know interacting and learning and being a part of this uh, academic community with you. Questions, comments, concerns, you can always email me and I'm very much looking forward to the next 16 weeks, 17 weeks, however many there are. Thanks for tuning in. And again, this was an overview of the syllabus. Questions, comments, concerns, please email me. I'll see you soon. Bye now.